Item A14 is carried over from November 13th. Consideration of policy regarding media releases and release of public information. So as directed by your board, staff has prepared uh, attached policy. We've uh, basically formalized practices that have been developed over the past few years and added um, some additional um, some additional procedures. Um, the purpose is to ensure that news releases are to be distributed expeditiously and impartially. Um, the policy covers a range of topics from public health and safety to emergencies to visitor information. We wanted to make it as comprehensive as, as possible. Um, in these situations, the county PIO, public information officer, uh, Deborah Summerfield, um, is the primary source of information. Uh, she helps uh, many departments draft press releases in, in a standard format and um, has an established uh, procedure to do that. Um, and she's the primary spokesperson in, in case of emergencies. Um, in other situations, uh, we recognize that um, a department needs to provide, be the primary spokesperson. They would have access to that information. Um, air quality typically provides um, information on, on those issues, uh, the sheriff, um, public health. Um, but we've added, um, kind of formalized the practice of notifying the PIO whenever other departments issue a press release. Uh, that's part of the policy. Um, I think that kind of concludes my, my overview. If you have any specific questions, um, we, we did distribute the policy to those departments that are most affected, um, that typically uh, release news information, air quality, public health, public services, and public works, and the sheriff's office. <coughs> and we've received comments from some of those departments and that have been incorporated into the policy. So with that, I'll answer any questions or have yeah, Deborah. Um, my question mainly has to do with the, the timing. It seems like the um, one of the major changes here is that departments, when they issue news to the press, whether it's a, in the form of a press release or if it's in the form of just conversations with the media, that they're to notify the public information officer, right? So that if there are inquiries or whatever, that, that if any other news source wants information, that they have a go-to person. And um, so the, I, I think the word immediately should be entered in uh, on the second page of this document, on the first paragraph where it says the spokesperson shall notify the county PIO. I think they, they need to do it. You have as soon as possible later, but I think it has to be as soon as possible, or if, if not immediately, uh, when they're contacted immediately. I think we need to keep our PIO informed. The top of the second page. Yeah, I, I, I agree. <clears throat> yeah, if they're if they could CC them, or you know, it shouldn't yeah. be it impossible. It doesn't have to be a big process, but it should happen. Any other board comments? Well, just don't ask a question, Mr. Chair. And I didn't see it delineated in the policy. What is, what is the repercussion in the event that the uh, department head does not comply with the policy, policy if uh, the board adopted it as presented? Well, it's the, it's the same uh, result as with any other county policy. Most of the county policies don't have a uh, an or else type clause attached to them, but the or else is nonetheless there because these are county policies. Your board's entitled to establish county policies and procedures, and county department heads are required to follow those county policies and procedures. And if they don't, <laughs> it depends what is upon the... it depends upon the circumstances. I I would hope that each county department head and county management staff would realize their continuing obligation to adhere to and abide by board directed county policies and procedures that essentially involve the use of county resources, county information, county taxpayer dollars. Yep. It also gives employees in the departments um, what they need to know. This is the county policy. This is, it has to be followed. And it provides for a consistency so that your board has, has essentially established the map and now all the county departments know exactly how to follow it. So that's a good situation for the county departments as well. I, I imagine they'll all be very happy to see this. 
Any other board comments? I'm going to reserve mine for a minute. <clears throat> um, any public wish to speak to this? <clears throat> Hi there. I'm John Jensen. Uh, I live in Lucerne. I'm the co-founder and administrative support for Lake County News, our business here for the last six years. Um, and before I get too far into this, I want to tell Deborah that you did a fantastic job during the Scots fire, and we were so impressed uh, to work with you uh, as you uh, handled that element that previously might have been covered by OES, but was so, so much so uh, superiorly covered by yourself. Thank you. Um, Deborah really set the bar uh, for how public information should be handled. I actually have a, a, a brief presentation for you. Um, if you'd like to entertain it. And I have a suggestion about repercussions as well. Um, the suggestion to use the word immediacy, I think, is, is essential to this policy um, because that's part of what my company is suffering with. Um, and with that, I'd like to go ahead and read you a piece. Elizabeth Larson is my wife. She and I run Lake County News. She runs publishing and editorial, and I run administration. Elizabeth and I want to commend yeah, County. Yeah, pull the mic up just a tiny bit. Yeah, yeah, it's on. It just needs to be. Elizabeth and I want to commend County Administrative staff and the board for swiftly addressing the need for a cohesive media information release policy. While it is regrettable that a single department has created the need to expend limited resources to develop such a plan, the public can hope to be better informed by government during times of peril, whether it be natural or created by people. The sheriff recently exclusively blacklisted Lake County News from receiving public safety information currently shared with other news and quasi-news organizations, including our competitor. A sole department head has determined that information vital to thousands of daily Lake County news readers may only be obtained through the Public Records Act process. Those requests allow 10 days for fulfillment and will result in stale information long after the immediacy of public safety issues has elapsed and potentially puts people at risk. We've experienced and documented a history of unanswered questions and requests for public information ignored or answered improperly by the sheriff. Clearly, his attitude toward the public's right to expect prompt, accurate information from its own government is one of abject disdain. The sheriff's attitude toward the media regarding public safety information is no better. At worst, it threatens to put citizens at risk. Now we've been blacklisted and we'd like a board opinion on the matter. Does the board support the sheriff's decision? And we can cover that later. We received notifications of the ridiculous new LCSO policy applied only to Lake Co News via email from the sheriff's business venture, which is a crematorium, instead of any official channel. While we were unclear as to the legitimacy of the message due to its source, it is evident that we have been removed from the sheriff's media distributions distribution list while our competitors have not. The only question is who's next? We would propose to the board that absent a formal media policy universally applied across county departments, individual department heads can continue to pursue personal vendettas as has been illustrated by the sheriff. A departmentally consistent policy could help resolve some of the issues by providing guidance to departments and helping to avoid abuse. And now for the repercussions. In my opinion, as a, as a voter and a journalist, Lake County Sh Sheriff Francisco or Frank or Francis or whatever name he's going by today should be immediately censured by this board with a vote of no confidence to send the message that this board will not tolerate any attempt to stifle and intimidate the free press. And that's my message to you. No, he already has. The sheriff has violated the will of the pulse or the spirit of public information. Um, I'm suggesting that you uh, hold a closed session immediately 
and a vote of no confidence for the sheriff, and that you censure the guy. He's actually that would be done in open session. You can't do that in closed session. Okay, no, it'd be, we have that's that. I thought you'd yeah. discuss it in closed no. session. Uh, in any case, I, I want to tell you thanks for your time. Uh, I really, really appreciate, Elizabeth and I really appreciate the fact that you brought this up. We know that we're the reason that this is brought up, and we apologize uh, for having brought this to a head, and it's unfortunate that it has to be discussed. It's been a years of, of actually quite good uh, information exchange between the county and our business, as well as the other media. And only recently, in the last couple of years, has that all fallen away. Um, and and the, the bottom line is this really does put the public at risk. Uh, during the uh, Walker and Y fires, uh, I sent all of you some emails uh, asking you, you know, where where is OES? What's going on? I called Central Dispatch to ask them where are the evacuation centers. This was hours into the fire. I'm a reporter. I call them up. We're going to we're getting deluged with a request from our readers. Where do we go? What do we do with our pets? What about our livestock? On and on and on all day. Finally, I realize I need to call up Central Dispatch because we're not hearing anything. Uh, so I call up Central Dispatch and I speak to Amber, I guess it is, who tells me that uh, we don't have a press release, so uh, we can't give out any information about evacuation centers or what to do with your livestock or anything like that. Um, I pressed her for public safety information and told her that, you know, I, I'm not sure if she was aware or that there was a fire happening here and people were losing their homes. Uh, and, and finally she said, well, it's not official, but I think the quarry is where the evacuation center is. And, and that's the best we got. So we couldn't even get it for publication uh, to tell people where to go in, the, in the, the heat of a fire. That day, we had 95,000 page views and more than 50,000 visitors on our site. So that tells you that people were coming to us looking for this information. And now we've been cut off by the sheriff out of a personal vendetta. Uh, we'd, we'd like to see you take action on both these things. Uh, the media policy and a censure of the sheriff. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Questions? The board? Uh, I have one. Are you, say, are you stating that you didn't get information on the day of the Y fire because of the issues between uh, the sheriff and you uh, and Laco News? Because th there were a lot of people that didn't get information on the Y fire. No, no, that was that was generally bad information dispersal. Right. We, uh, and we went through, by the way, we had a board item where we went through that whole situation. And, yeah, and, and it uh, goes back to the Walker fire. You'll remember the original Walker fire uh, when when uh, the previous board uh, recognized us with proclamation because we far exceeded OAS's capability to tell the public uh, <laughs> what was going on. Um, and so that, that continued right up to the Scotts fire when Deborah took over and Shazam. So we know that it can be done properly. You guys proved it. Deborah proved it. Uh, I read the policy. I, I thought it uh, uh, it did lack uh, a, a tone of immediacy that is that is uh, important to this. This whole business of the sheriff wanting to uh, and, and let me relate how this works. The sheriff has required us uh, through this crematory email to file a public records act request for any information at all. Um, all well and good, except for then the sheriff takes a minimum of 10 days to decide whether or not to release the information. And personally, I get the response from uh, command staff within several days, typically, sometimes later than that, saying that, and it doesn't matter what I ask for, whether it's very specific or slightly broad, I'm told that my request is too broad. Recently, I asked for the current list of CCW holders. I've received this information before, and I've requested I've requested it in the past and received it. It's not a big deal. It's a list of names with uh, the dates that they got their CCWs. I received an email back from Lieutenant Brooks telling me that my request was too broad, and so I had to refer him, and I believe that I uh, CC'd you on that. I encouraged Lieutenant Brooks to 
to review the l short sentence <coughs> that said just the list. And that's it. Um, so it appears that there's a pattern uh, and that we are being isolated. Well, we know we're being isolated, but it appears that there's a pattern among the command staff uh, to chill information. And uh, we're not very happy about it. Oh, I'm sorry. One That's more right. Go quick ahead. question, John. Did you've read this policy? I did. Does this um, does this solve that problem? With two exceptions, uh, immediacy needs to be inserted into that. Uh, there, there should be, you know, some stated repercussion for violating county policy. Because I think we can all agree that even after today, this situation is unlikely to change with this sheriff unless something more serious is done. I'm sorry that the sheriff isn't here today. Don't to, be. <laughs> to listen to this. Um, hopefully he's watching on TV. <clears throat> I, yeah, I had a question from around. Yeah. Is Denise, are you done, or you have? I'm, I'm done. I guess I, I, I'm just wondering if, if you pick up the phone and you ask for a list of CCW carriers, and uh, the average employee who receives that, uh, I'm w hoping that this policy directs. So, County Council, maybe you could help out. This policy is going to uh, effectuate uh, resolution of most of those kind of issues consistently through the, the county offices. As to the Public Records Act and that information, I think that the Sheriff's Department has been attempting to resolve that. They've had numbers of people answering Public Records Act requests, and some of them are... Uh, I would be happy to, to conduct some basic training of what a PRA request is, what the circumstances are. I, I know there's some confusion. Sometimes people go to classes. The whole point of a Public Records Act request is, and, and Certainly that's not employed by every county in my experience, but it always has laudably by your board, which is that information is public unless there's a very narrow exception that says it's not. And that information may have to be redacted according to particularly issues today with identity theft, if people's social security numbers, home addresses, etc. I've never had an experience where members of the press haven't understood those redactions and understood that certain exceptions have applied. And, and certainly in working with Elizabeth and John, that's always been the case. And, and sometimes no has been the response with a reason given. So um, it may be that we need to intensify that training, and my office is, is happy to do that. There is a a process that does should be followed, but that should also be consistent throughout the county. Everyone should be responding to a Public Records Act request the same way. But the but the item that we're on is not necessarily dealing with Public Records Request Act. These, no. These are two different. Two yeah. different no, that's issues. just something I'm offering I, as a potential. Right. Solution. I'm just trying to keep you on track. I'm sorry. You know, sometimes <laughs> I, I. It's a reverse. That Rhone Act is tough. I, I I get it some days and not others. You know, since we since we got off onto the uh, hold on that. <laughs> Since we got off onto the PRAs, it's interesting to note that we file PRAs uh, on a fairly regular basis to acquire information for enterprise news stories and that sort of thing, background information, uh, you name it. We also file PRAs as part of Sunshine Week to determine uh, compliance with local agencies, uh, by local agencies with the California Public Records Act request. And the Public Records Act uh, is somewhat misinterpreted by the SO. They, they, they believe that they have 10 days to respond when, when in fact what they have is 10 days to get 10 days maximum to get the information together or provide a reason why they can't do it. They are to immediately respond as to whether or not they can produce the information and this information should be provided at the counter. That's a whole other issue. Uh, one, one interesting uh, uh, episode we asked for a you know we realized yeah. I, I'm sorry, I, I, but Mr. Chair, your point is well taken. The PRA, Public Records Act, yeah. is not before your board today, so. Yeah, and I. Well, I just I, wanted to point out that it's, it's part of a pattern here. One Public Records Act request that we made, after we realized there was a problem, we were getting uh, slow or no responses, no res non-responses to emails. In fact, I'm still waiting to, uh, for a response from uh, Lieutenant Brooks from an email he sent, uh, we've been corresponding on um, yesterday. 
one request we made when we realized there was a problem was that we just simply decided to ask for the list of all the public records ask, act requests that had been made in the previous year, just to see if anybody else was getting burned. It took uh, 10 days <laughs> to get an Excel sheet, and redaction is uh, what brought this up. The entire Excel sheet had, you know, rows and rows and rows and rows of X, uh, you know, somebody's name requested on a date uh, without any other information, just that a records request was made. That's it. The entire list, save for one entry, was redacted, including our own. Now, this is so humorous, we've had it framed. Um, the only one that wasn't redacted wasn't ours. So, so we're not really sure what, you know, mindset put that together. But what we're talking about today is media releases, the press releases that the Sheriff's Department sends out. The Sheriff has decided that it's no longer necessary to send press releases to Lake County News. Um, and in fact, when I went to the Sheriff's Department to ask for the press releases, they handed me a form to fill out for a Public Records Act request to receive press releases that had already been released to the public. Right, and that's, Council, that, that's kind of why I would give a little flexibility, because I know that in this case, the Public Records Request Act has been tied to their media releases that were expected by them, and so you know I know that to be a fact, and that's you know, I want to. They are they are tied together in that regard in in this instance. So, so. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, John, I had a question, and, and I appreciate uh, your comments, John. Um, and I too understand that from the information that I've been presented that there is this hurdle that. Lake County News and only Lake County News is required to go through to get access to information as I see it and as you presented it and communicated it today. Uh, the, the concern that I have, um, if this is the case, is the unilateral decision uh, by Sheriff Rivero to, uh, to deny uh, Lake County News uh, um, the immediate information that I think uh, is in the interest of the health and safety of the community uh, for a dis a dissemination purposes. Um, in the event, for example, we have um, a kidnapping, a burglary, uh, a missing child, uh, um, any acts of violence, force, uh, whether it be through their uh, website or through Facebook, which I think has over 8,000 uh, people or subscribers or liking for Lake County News around there. There's a large audience within the county and surrounding areas uh, where having that information disseminated to and through as a median uh, is very important. And to have them isolated uh, while allowing other uh, news media, whether it be the B or Observer or Middletown Star, Time Star, <laughs> um, access to that same information to me is very problematic and it's very uh, disconcerting to me uh, on the health and safety aspects of the constituency that I represent and the citizens at large. And so if this policy that's before us today will help address that uh, with the tone and, and underscoring the importance of immediate release of information, uh, I, I think it's something that we need to act upon. Uh, I don't know uh, why the sheriff, uh, I mean, I guess it's a personality thing, uh, but to put people in harm's way uh, because of a personality conflict to me is very problematic. Um, I've been blacklisted by him. I, I wish I could and, say it was merely personality. Well, I, I don't know the dynamics. I just know from my experience, it's unfortunate that uh, when there's a disagreement uh, that uh, he unilaterally blacklists people and cuts off communications, and that's uh, very problematic. But that's between he and I. Uh, it affects my ability to, to, to serve my constituents. We at times disagree on our, every Tuesday, and uh, we're able to overcome it. And there's times where uh, I'm sure you and I, and even Elizabeth and I haven't seen eye to eye, and, but... Uh, we as elected officials have a responsibility where you don't blacklist people. And the information I disseminate to you or any other medium or media uh, uh, is not necessarily always hinges upon health and safety and where lives are at stake. Whereas with the Sheriff's Department, I see uh, those decisions where people's lives are at risk and uh, it's of a greater importance. So uh, I, I think we need to do whatever we can to try to remedy uh, this action uh, by the Sheriff uh, that he has unilaterally taken. Uh, and hope that uh, rank and file staff will follow the policy uh, and that if the policy is not uh, followed that we will take the appropriate steps and explore all options 
in terms of making sure policy that is implemented is uh, followed. Any other board? Well, I'm going to weigh in a little bit here. Um, you know, the, the problem I've had with in, for, since the very beginning that we had this discussion, you know, we needed to do this, we needed to formalize it, but it's, it's always difficult and dangerous ground when you have to create an entire policy that affects the entire county as a result of the actions of one man. Um, it's, it's no secret, you know, why we're here. We're here because of, of uh, what's been done to, to a media resource that we all rely on very heavily. Uh, public safety is at risk when, when the information is not given to them. And, and I, but I also feel that this policy is, while, while it is a good roadmap for some respects, I think that it, it will be violated right away. We're going to experience that right away. I'd be more than happy to take a vote of no confidence today. I, I don't think there's any secret to that. But I also think that if we don't, if, if, unless the board's going to be unanimous on it, if we do do this, I think that'll cause him to dig his heels in even farther and further damage. And it's not just about Lake Co News, but it is about public safety. I'm hoping that he wakes up and says, okay, let's, let's, let's do what's right by the public. Yeah. Um, Although we can use that as a sanction if we need need to, and I think we should should uh, I think he's aware of the fact that we will. I think you know we've seen transparency. The word transparency is nothing but a bumper sticker slogan during a campaign. This transparency that we've seen with him is reminiscent of a third world dictator that lives about 90 miles south of Florida Keys, and and it hasn't benefited us one little bit. Transparency is something that we we need to take seriously. We all do it. We've demonstrated everything that we need to do to make sure the public is aware of what, what we have going on, and I think that should fall on every single department head, especially those that are elected. Anything else? Board? Thank you. Mr. Brown, I agree. Um, first of all, I, 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 we need to pass this policy, and we need to insert the word immediately in there. Um, I think we should... Uh, expect every department head, and that means every department head, to follow the policy. And if that doesn't happen, I think we have um, we have to take whatever action we can to ensure that it does. Jim, well, I uh, I really uh, appreciate Supervisor so Rushing making sure we add the the word immediate or immediacy into that to make sure that there's no question about that, that this must be done. And I I totally agree that we would expect all department heads elected, um, appointed, whatever, to, to comply with this in its completeness. And if they don't, we will be prepared to take swift and appropriate action immediately. Any other public input? If not, then I'll bring it back to the board for action. What is the appropriate motion to adopt this policy? Approve the policy by motion as amended, making notation on the second page of the policy that the spokesman shall immediately notify the county PIO of any contact. That's the second page, fifth line. Right, second page, fifth line. So with that amendment, um, I move that we adopt the policy as amended. Second. We have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. May I make another comment? Um, thank you for passing that. I hope, I truly hope this helps. Um, but I'm an optimist. It, it, it's interesting. Uh, I think it was last Friday. There was a, a, a very uh, violent, brutal murder um, out Morgan Valley Road. Um, and uh, we we've had to adjust how we do our work. It, it's you know. We've had to change the way we do business in order to address this situation. So I drove down there. Uh, we assumed that Monday there would be a press release um, to our competitors uh, put out about this. But the, the reality is that there is a uh, vicious murderer somewhere that has been in the county as recently as last weekend. And nobody knows about it but us. That's
that's it. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair, we're getting seriously off off topic here. My apologies. Yes, but we perhaps just keep it limited. Yeah. Way. Make it quite clear that there is not a vicious murder running around Lake County. That was not a homicide, and I just want to make that sh clear. Just like there wasn't a suicide in the jail that they reported on a few months ago, which I didn't appreciate. Thank you. Okay. So that item is completed. Um, so we'll move on. We have one more sheriff's item. And, uh, and we also have one for Carol that we'll take up real quick, too. Um, so, bounce around here a little bit. What item is the sheriff's? 17. 17, A17, yeah. Um, this is a consideration of a request to waive the formal bidding process and make a determination that competitive bidding would produce no economic benefit to the county and consideration of a request to authorize Sheriff Corner Assistant Purchasing Agent to issue a request, a purchase order to Baker Distributing Incorporated for replacement HVAC units for the Lake County Jail Railroad Facility. 